I like to lay it nice and flat as I'm pinning it. And I even like to add just a pin on the top here, even though I'm not going to stitch up there, it just holds it in place. And it also holds my pocket bag out of the way. So now what I'm gonna do to attach the divider is I'm going to stitch the side. I'm gonna go all the way across the bottom and then all the way up to the other side. When you're stitching the sides, the seams here, you can use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That way, when you attach your side panels, you won't see that stitching. It'll be hidden inside the seam allowance. All right, now that that side is done, this is what it looks like. Let's pretend this is my the top of my bag and there's my little divider and that's the bottom. All right, so let's move on to this side here. Now, one thing that I missed, one step I missed is if you would like to reinforce this folded top edge, you could go through and just do a little bit of a top stitching there. So let me go ahead and do that on this one. And then I'll just do it on, on, on the one that I already installed. It's not a big deal. And you can play around with whatever your preference is here. You could do a quarter of an inch, you could do an eighth of an inch and then do a second row at a quarter of an inch just to make it a little bit sturdy. So let's go ahead and do that. Show you what that looks like. And there it is. Now you have two rows of stitching. And again, this is inside the bag, so it's whatever your preference is. So let me go ahead and pin this side and then I'll finish the top stitching on that side over there off camera. All right, so again, we want the folded edge or the top stitched edge facing the top of the bag and you want the seamed edge at the bottom. You're gonna look for your two notches and you're gonna use the notch that's closest to the top of the bag to line up your edge. Do the same thing on the other side. Lay it nice and flat. And now we're gonna stitch the three edges, side, bottom, and up the other side. Okay, so now both of my dividers are in and we're ready to attach our zipper tab and facings to the lining. To do that, we're going to flip over the zipper and we're going to lay the lining pieces with these lining fabrics with right sides facing each other. We're going to start pinning it with the middle notch. We're going to line those up. We're going to put a couple of clips just to hold everything in place. And then we're going to sew across. All right, and we're going to do the other side again. Our linings are going to be facing each other. We're going to start pinning it, matching that middle notch. And then we're going to match the edges. Make sure everything lines up. And stitch all the way across. OK, 
Okay, now we have our lining bag attached to our zipper. And when we open it up, there's our dividers. Before we attach the facing to the side panel of the lining, I'm going to talk a little bit about inserting a D-ring. This step is optional because the shoulder strap is optional. So this is where the swivel clasp will attach if you want to have a shoulder strap for your bag. So let me explain how I make the tab to install the D-ring into the lining, between the lining and the facing. So we're going to take the tab piece and we're going to fold it the longest side we're going to fold that in half and we're going to stitch a quarter of an inch here now we're going to turn this inside out and we're going to end up with something like this and now we're going to feed our D-ring through it th like this. We're going to fold it here and we're just going to give it a nice little basting stitch to hold it together. All right, so that's what that looks like. Now that's finished. So now what we have to do is we lay the facing on top of the lining and the D-ring tab with the facing and the lining right sides together and we stitch along the top here. And we're going to use 3 eighths of an inch because that's the seam allowance for that seam line. And there you have it. There's your D-ring and that's where your clasp will hook onto for your shoulder strap. Now we're going to attach the side panels, which we've already attached the facings to the lining. We're gonna attach that to the lining itself. Okay, here we go. So to make things a little bit clearer and easier, I've made red markings to show you exactly where I'm going to do my stay stitching and where I'm going to pivot on the side panels. So on the lining bag itself, I've marked the notch where the pivoting happens. And I've also marked a line where I'm going to do a little bit of stay stitching just to reinforce that area where I'm going to be clip clipping into. So let's go ahead and add the stay stitching. And again, I'm going to do about slightly inside of the 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm going to do that on all four notches. Here's my stay stitching and I've done that on all four notches. Again, these are the notches that are labeled on the pattern um, where you're going to pivot your side panels and that basically creates that corner seam. Here are my side panels. And again, just as a guide, and you can do this on your own fabric, I'm using a disappearing ink pen and it usually disappears as I'm pressing my seams. So I've marked 3 8 inch seam allowance on this side of the panel and the bottom and that's going to give you a guide of where you're going to stop and pivot and then keep sewing now before i do that i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to slash on my notch markings right up to that stitching line and i'm going to do that on all four notches and being very careful that i don't cut through the stitching All right, so I'm going to pin 
my side panel to the lining. I'm going to start by pinning, matching that corner, that marking that I made with the red pen and the slash that I just made on that notch. So that corner is going to go right where that slash is. And then I'm going to pin up from there, making sure that I try to line up this area of the facing as much as possible. Okay. All right. Now, I like to stitch with the side panel facing up so that I can see exactly what I'm doing. And then when I get to this point, it's easy for me to pivot this way. Okay, so I'm getting close to that pivoting point. So I'm just going to hold that in place. And I'm going to slowly get to that pivoting point. I'm going to drop my needle, raise my presser foot, and I'm just going to turn my side panel, opening that clip a little bit so that I can easily now have all of my work facing this way. So that, so that now I can keep stitching. Now, here's my corner again, and here's my slash. So I'm gonna make sure those two things also match. Again, raise my presser foot, turn my work, and continue stitching. Now I'm going up the other side and I'm going to take a moment here and clip these things together. Just to give me a little bit of guidance and I'm gonna continue stitching. Show you what that looks like. There we go. Now we have this little boxed shape and that's what the other side looks like. Now one thing I like to do, there are two things you can do. You can always put a little square of interfacing on the lining side if you'd like to reinforce it or after you're done on this side where you can see that clip, you can go in right on top of that original stitch and stitch once again to reinforce it. So let me show you how I do that. Bring it here, stitch right on top of it, drop your needle in the corner, move that out of the way so you're not stitching over the fold, and then just come across. And that's it. I like to do that only because I have this slash here and sometimes if you don't catch enough of that fabric, you can start ripping that, that little section there. So I'll go ahead and do that on the other side. Okay. And now I have my reinforced box panel. At this point, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and then we can take it over to the ironing board and we can press those seams if you want. Now we're ready to create our rolled handles. So here is one of our handles and I've drawn a line 
along the middle right here from this notch to this notch and that's the very middle of my fabric piece and now I'm going to press under about a quarter of an inch on both sides the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm working with a canvas fabric if this was a vinyl then you wouldn't necessarily have to fold it and just make sure you have a nice clean cut but because we're working with fabric we're going to go ahead and press that now we're going to fold the handle this way and we're basically going to bring this raw edge to just about that red line but we're going to leave a little gap it could be somewhere between a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch because we're going to fold it again there and we want to reduce bulk as much as possible now we could either just fold it and press it this canvas is easy to press but if you're working with something that doesn't like to stay put you can always add a little bit of steam -a seam tape if you're going to use the tape I highly recommend that you put the tape probably about a quarter of an inch below the red line because we're going to end up stitching right near that line and we want to avoid stitching over the glue of the steam seam tape but I think I'm going to try to do it without the tape so let's see how that works out okay that turned out pretty good like I said the canvas does press nice and sharp so I think I can go ahead and work with it without taping it down. At this point, we're going to fold again along the middle here. And we're going to clip everything in place, making sure that these edges here are nice and even. So we're going to go ahead and clip all the way all along the entire piece. All the way to the other end now we're going to make some markings on the folded edge here the unpinned or unclipped end we're going to measure an inch and a half from here and make a marking so we're going to measure one and a half and we're going to mark it Always make sure that you're using a marker that will not stain your fabric. So if you have to test it first, do that on a, on a scrap piece of fabric. An inch and a half. And basically what we're gonna do at this point is we're going to start stitching here. We're gonna go here, across, and then we're gonna go all the way across this clipped area down and then over to the other marking we're going to do this with about an eighth of an inch away from the edge Stitch nice and slow so that your stitches stay nice and even. Okay, let me explain really quickly why we left this side unstitched. That's because at this point, we're gonna take our handle and we're going to roll it again and we're gonna pin it in place. And we're gonna start right where that marking is because that's where we're gonna stitch from there to the other side. But we're going to use this seam as our guide and we're going to stitch right on top of that seam so that when this other side is stitched we don't have to worry about matching the seam on this side that's why we left this unstitched so then it's going to look nice and neat okay let's go ahead and start clipping starting 
with this marking right here. And we're going to do that all along the handle. We're going to use this stitching as a guide. So we need to know where to stop and then we're going to backstitch there to, to reinforce it. All right, let's do this. And go very, very slowly. And there you have it. Now you have your rolled handle. Now I need to make the second one. Now that we have our rolled handles complete, I've made markings on the top here. We're gonna follow the stitching along these three sides and then my marking here, which is three quarters of an inch from this stitching, just to make a little square. And you can really make it whatever you want as long as the finished stitching is something that appeals to you. In my case, I like to have a stitching that's a little bit of a square and then I stitch along diagonally. So it gives it like a, a square and a cross inside. I like the way that looks. So we're gonna attach our, our handles to our front and back panels. So I've marked using the pattern, the placement of where my handles are gonna go. And so I'm going to basically just lay that over just like that. And you can measure it just maybe the distance from here to here. Make sure this it's the same distance on the other side until you get it right. Now, it's a little hard to pin this in place. So if you like, you can use a little bit of that steam -a seam tape. I try not to use it only because I do the cross stitch and I don't want to stitch over that glue. So use your discretion if you're comfortable just holding it in place somehow. Um, if not, use a little bit of glue in the middle there just to hold it in place. Or you can take a really thick hand sewing needle and just put a couple of basting stitches just to hold it in place. All right, let's go ahead and get this done. I'm going to go diagonally and I'm going to stitch from that corner to this corner. And you can draw a line as a guide if you want to do this step. Now I'm going to stitch across once again and this helps to reinforce it because you're going to be using that as your handle and it's going to get a lot of strain in that area. So stitching over it more than a couple times um, is perfectly fine. It just gives it a little bit more strength. I'm gonna stop at this other corner. I'm gonna pivot. And now I'm gonna make my stitching going diagonally across the other side. And I like to do another stitching in the bottom just as a reinforcement stitch. And that's what that looks like. Now we do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now I've done both sides and this is what it looks like on the underside. So we have nice reinforced stitches on both sides. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing to the other panel and then we can move on to putting the side panels onto the bag itself. Here are the front and back panels with the handles already stitched on them and our side panels. Now, we're basically going to follow the same steps as we did with the lining as far as attaching the side panels. I went ahead and marked 
my notches this is where we're going to slash and pivot and remember we we uh, stay stitched just where the notches are just to reinforce that as we slash into each notch i've also marked where we're going to stop stitching pivot along that slash and then change the direction of our stitching to make that little box at the bottom of the bag we're going to stitch the bottom of the front and back panels like we did with the lining but we're going to stitch the entire length we're not going to leave an opening like we did with the lining so let's go ahead and do that first okay one of the things that i like to do with the bottom seam i'm going to take it to the ironing board and i'm going to iron it in place but i like to with the, the seam allowances facing to either side, it doesn't matter which side, I like to top stitch an eighth of an inch and then a quarter of an inch. I like to do that because it reinforces this seam, which is going to end up as the bottom of your bag. And doing the top stitching will reinforce that seam. This is nice and pressed. We have our seam allowances pressed towards either side and then we're going to top stitch on the side where we have our seam allowances and then we top stitch again about a quarter of an inch away from that edge and just making sure that we catch that seam allowance as we do that because that's going to reinforce it and you can just use the side of your presser foot as a guide and align that with your edge. And there it is. All right, let's move on to attaching the side panels. All right, as we pin one of the panels to the main bag, keep in mind that we want to match the line this marking on the side panel to that slash opening where the notch was okay so that's what that's gonna look like now given that we're working with a layer of fabric that's very stiff you can try stitching this either from the side of the bag itself or the side of the side panel where the side panel is the reason why I'm saying that is because you need to find what makes it easier for you to stop at this point here and pivot for me I like to try both sides to be completely honest um, it just depends on how the fabric feels to me so I'm gonna try doing it this way the bag facing up and the side panel on the underside and then I'm going to make sure that I stop here, I pivot, I spread it, and then line it up with the side panel. So I'll try to zoom in as much as I can to show you how that, how that works out. All right, as we get close, we're going to make sure that we stop at that slash. And you can back stitch if you want a little bit just to reinforce that area. Now I'm going to hold my side panel underneath and I'm gonna try to maneuver it. Again, this is very stiff, so you're gonna have to play around with it a little bit. And what we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to bring the fabric with the presser foot raised so that my fabric and my side panel match so that those edges are nice and even and now we continue to stitch making sure that again this line matches our notch okay try to get as close to that line as possible Now when we get to the slash, we 
drop our needle, raise our presser foot, get a hold of the side panel underneath and bring it around to the other side, making sure that we spread that slash open. Okay, once we get that done, I like to start pinning these edges so that I can ease these two fabrics as I stitch. All right. And this is what we end up with. Here's our boxed side panel. Pretty simple, right? Now, I like to go through it again and stitch almost on top of it. Just a row of stitching just inside that seam allowance to reinforce it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a second stitch and then I'll, I'll do the same thing and attach the other side. And then I'll show you what our next step is going to be. Try to adjust my camera so that you can see the entire bag. So basically we just finished installing our side panels. Here are our pivots and slashes and I've gone in and double stitched both sides. So now we have a nice little bag and we're ready to attach the bag to the lining. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the bag inside out. And depending on how stiff your material is, it's going to take a minute for you to get all those corners out. And you're going to notice that it's going to wrinkle a little bit because of the interfacing, but you can always press it if you want or add a little steam to get those wrinkles out. Now that we have our bag turned inside out, we're going to insert the bag itself into the lining and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So basically we have our lining. We're going to make sure that our zipper is completely open and we're going to put the bag inside of the lining. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you choose to do the panels, just make sure that there's one panel on each side so that the bottoms are kind of matching. Now that we have the bag inside of the lining, as you can see, the right side of the lining and the right side of the bag are facing each other. And now using the notches let's get that zipper out of the way we're going to stitch the facing to the top edge of the bag now you need to make sure that you have both the zipper and your handle out of the way so just tuck that handle right in there and use your clips that's probably going to be a little bit easier than using pins but use your discretion now, another tip, I like to uh, position the seam allowance opposite each other. So if my seam allowance on, let's, let's start with the seam allowance of the bag itself. I like to have the seam allowance facing the side panel. So I'm going to put the seam allowance of the lining facing in the opposite direction. And then I'm gonna put a clip on there to hold that in place. And I'm gonna do that all the way around the top. Again, make sure both the handle and your zipper is out of the way because you're making sure you're only stitching the top edge and you don't get anything caught in that stitching. Again. The seams of my bag side panels are going into the side.